My name is Sophie Talreja. And Dr. Talreja. And my name is Deepak Talreja. I'm a cardiologist with Centera Cardiology Specialists. We live in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Sophie is my daughter and a student at the Princess Anne IB program in Virginia Beach. Wonderful. So in layman's terms, can you tell me about your research? Maybe I'll start and let Sophie pick up some. So one of the big questions that has always been present in the world of cardiovascular medicine is what diet is the best? Probably every three or four years, Time Magazine has a cover that says which diet is the best and so forth. Our question was in our local community, what diet changes could we make to help increase, increase the health of the population? And we looked at four different diets. We looked at the vegan diet, the Mediterranean diet, a ketogenic diet, the paleo diet, and the DASH diet, which is one recommended by the American Heart Association. We solicited volunteers and got 100 people in the community to volunteer to participate in each diet. And then we had a meeting where they understood what was going on and we measured all their biometrics, their weights, their heights, their blood pressures, their heart rates. And we did blood work, including advanced measures of cholesterol. Then for the next 60 days, every week that group met and they had to write down every single thing they ate and we scored them. In fact, everyone scored themselves together to see how well they were doing with regards to the diet plan they were in. At 60 days, we remeasured blood pressures and extensive laboratory work. And then for the next six months, patients had to try to keep it up on their own. And then we remeasured that information once again. And we tracked from day zero to day 60 and then 60 days to six months, what were the outcomes? What happened to their cholesterol levels? What would you add? Yeah, so we basically looked at all four of the diets to try and find which one was the best. And then ultimately we found that the vegan diet was the best. And Sophie, why was the vegan diet the best? Um, well, there's still some things that we have to like look at because there were like, um, depending on the amount of people that chose the different diets, like the results were like slightly altered. But um, compared to the other diets, the vegan was like the whole food plant-based. So it was like the most like what we think of like, the nutritious food, like a lot more like uh, fruits and vegetables and like no meat at all. Whereas some of the others had like still some meat or stuff like that. And as Sophie, Sophie is showing in her poster, when you look at the lipid parameters, every group had a drop in their blood pressure. So no matter which diet the patients chose to participate in, if they really followed the diet and the more compliant they were, the better the results in terms of lowering blood pressure. The average weight loss was 12 pounds in the first 60 days. The highest weight loss was 60 pounds. And as you show in your poster, the LDL cholesterol dropped in the Mediterranean group, in the paleo group, in the DASH group, and the vegan group, but the greatest drop was in the vegan group, right? So Sophie, now knowing this, have you changed your diet at all? Or do you plan to change your diet at all? Kind of, yeah. So I'm more like aware of the foods that I eat. And like before the, the diet study, we kind of ate more of like a closer to Mediterranean diet. We eat a lot of like pastas and we try to eat like fruits and vegetables and stuff. And now like knowing how like how much of a difference it makes to eat really healthy, it's like more important to like be conscious about that. And what do you plan on doing in the future? Do you plan on working in science in the future or what, what plans do you have? Um, I'm not really sure yet, but I don't know, maybe. Did you enjoy working on the research? Yes, it was cool to look at and see uh, all of the results. Awesome. And Dr. Talreja, would this change how you recommend um, dietary changes in your patients? Really great question. Diet is such a consequential issue because all of us have to make tough decisions and our economics, our lifestyles, time factors, all these things play into what goes on. So I think whenever I sit down with a patient and they ask me opinions on diet and what I recommend, I always cite this study as a direct experience. And it's been neat. It's been a couple of years since we finished the actual protocol. And I still see patients to this day in the office who were in the protocol or family members of people who are in the protocol. And they're always proud to say, well, I'm trying to stick with it. And here's what I've done. And here's what I've learned. 
when we closed out the study, we had a session for everyone and it was neat because it was very emotional. There were people in tears about how this had changed their lives and they were gonna stick with it forever. And as with all human activities, it's been tough for many people to stick with it. But the recommendations I make are, if there's a patient who has a diet that particularly appeals to them, for example, the keto diet, even though it didn't fare quite as well as the vegan diet, if they can do it and they can stick with it and it works with their lifestyle, then that's what I think they should do. And I recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a big Ornish program locally that's a whole food plant-based diet program. And I think this validates my belief in that program, certainly. But even small changes, even if people can't do it all the time, adding more fresh fruits, adding more vegetables. Sophie's modest, but she's taken a culinary, med culinary medicine classes. She's been involved in a lot of sustainability projects through the public school system here. And she's the one that's forcing me to eat healthfully. So I use that same power to force my patients to try to jump on the right track. Oh, well, that's great. Well, you know, I'm vegan and I've been vegan for a long time. So hearing this study just makes me really happy personally. Um, but do you, knowing my background, do you think that me being vegan has helped my cardiovascular disease? Unquestionably. And if you really ask, I mean, you know, we all have emotional reasons. We want to believe data in front of us and don't want to believe it. And I understand vegan diet doesn't work for some people, but if you look at the absolute scientific data in front of us and really decades worth of it, there's no question there's not a healthier lifestyle. The vegan diet really is an amazing diet. So for anyone with heart risk factors or heart disease, there's no question it makes a difference. And really over decades and over a lifetime of it, someone like you will do really well in the long run. It has nutrients. It allows your body to create things to help your heart work well and prevents plaque formation. So 100%, you're very much on the right track. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? I'm a word, Sophie. It was fun doing this. Hopefully we'll do more studies like this. Yes. You asked me more than the study, the, the most fun part of it beyond the data was we learned a lot ourselves. We've changed our lifestyles and I've seen that in the community. After we completed it, we actually did a series of cooking classes throughout the community, partnering with Whole Foods and they would loan us a chef and food and uh, we would do five or six sessions in a row and do lectures and eat healthy food together. And it's been fun to see it resonate out in the community. That is so great. Terry, I wanna join that class. <laughs> I love it. And Terry, I'm grateful for you and the American Heart Association for taking the time to pay attention to things like this that sometimes aren't as sexy as the latest gadget and latest procedure, but affects yeah. so many more people. This is a great focus. Yeah, and especially because in Hampton Roads, hypertension is such a huge yes. problem that this could be a way for people to mitigate that a little right. bit. Yeah. yeah. Great, well, thank you both so much. And I look forward to pushing this out to the community and pushing it out on social media and newsletters and everything. So thank you again so much. Thank you, Sophie. Great work, great job. And thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Okay, thank you.